All right, today I'm going to show you how to uh, edit your magazine front cover in InDesign after you have already edited your uh, photo that you took in the studio setting in Photoshop and saved it as a PNG file. If you haven't done that yet, have a look at the other tutorial on the channel to do so, so you understand the processes you need to take to get that done before you can actually start editing your magazine cover. So what we need to do, we open up InDesign. I'm using CS5. I think the ones on the school laptops are a CS4. Or if you've downloaded a free trial version, it'll be the Adobe InDesi InDesign uh, CC, which is fine. It's all pretty much the same in what we're trying to do. So what you need to do is select Create New Document. And make sure your intent is set to Print not web. We only need one page because we are doing just a front cover. We want to make sure our page size is A4. We only need one column and you want to adjust your margins to about five millimeters. If you do one, all the others will change once you click on it like that. And then you don't need to worry about the bleed and slug because we are printing at school and that's for, um, another purpose when you're printing out numerous pages etc to printers. Um, also just make sure you check the orientation so make sure it is set to portrait and not landscape because that's what uh, magazine covers are going to be and then press OK. Now you'll see what looks like an A4 piece of paper uh, on the screen which is your artboard that you're going to be working with. I also want you to make sure that your layers panel is um, showing. If it's not, all you need to go to is a window and click on layers to make sure it's there or click on F7 on your keyboard. Right. And the first thing we're going to do is rename this layer. Okay, and we're going to do that by double clicking on the layer and calling it background. Okay, and this means we're going to select our background color now, if you select a colour now and don't like it, don't worry, you can change it uh, later on. But to do this, we're going to go to the colour palette, okay, and you'll see that there's two boxes here, okay. This uh, first box is the fill, so we're going to be drawing a rectangle, which means <clears throat> the inside of the rectangle is going to be whatever colour our fill is, okay, and the outline of the rectangle is going to be whatever color this stroke is, okay? We don't want to have an outline of our rectangle for this purpose, so double click on the stroke layer, okay? And you'll see that if you do want a stroke color, you can choose the color here, all right? But I just wanna make sure the stroke square is in front of the fill square and I'm going to click none, okay? So now it's got a red line through it, which means there isn't gonna be any color on our outline, click back onto the fill and then choose our color. So we can choose it here, okay, or we can double click the uh, square and we can choose it um, here. So you want to look at your um, mock up and see what color scheme you came up with and then choose your background color accordingly. Uh, just for now, I'm going to keep my background color a Dark purple, maybe. Oh, put that with the purple and then make that a bit darker up here. Okay. Then I'm going to go over here and select our rectangle tool just by clicking it. And then I'm going to click and drag across the entire artboard. So the A4 paper. Okay. And now I have a rectangle that is covering the entire uh, artboard that is now going to be my background color. So I can go back onto my layers and then lock that layer by quick clicking the square next to the eye, okay? Which means now I can't touch um, and accidentally move that background layer, right? The next thing we're going to do is um, add in our image that we just cut out. So we're going to create a new layer, double click on it, and uh, name it your main cover image. Press OK. 
Then we're going to file and open. Okay, and we can go to the desktop and click cutout model. No, we're not. We're going to go to our um, finder window. If you don't have a finder window, you're on a PC, just find the file on your, wherever you saved it. So I saved it on the desktop. And then I'm going to click and drag it into the InDesign program. Okay, and you'll see that it's there. And then I make sure I'm on that layer. I just click and release and it's there. Okay, it looks super pixelated now. Don't freak out. All you need to do is go to view, display performance and click on high quality display and it'll show you what it actually looks like. All right. So I'm just going to zoom out using the minus and command on the keyboard. All right. Then I'm going to click on the free transform tool and hold down shift to resize. Okay. So I'll keep resizing until it's the size that I want. Okay. And then I'm going to click back onto the selection tool. And now I have my model on my page. You can see here that I didn't do a fantastic job with um, cutting out my model in the previous tutorial. Um, but you'd obviously take more time to do that. So it would look fine. Okay, once you're happy with whereabouts your model is going to be, I'm going to keep mine roughly in the center. Um, then I want you to lock that layer as well. You can always unlock that layer and move the model around according to where you want to put your cover lines and your heading, etc. But for now, let's just lock that where it is. The next thing we're going to do is um, use our another layer. So create a new layer and call this the masthead. Okay, and we're going to put our title in here. Okay, so we're going to click here on the left hand side on the text tool, exactly like the one in Photoshop, and click and drag to create a text box. And then you'll see up here we have heaps of options for our text. So all you need to do is select the font that you like. I'm just going to select this one for an example and then type the name of your magazine cover. I'll call this run runway for brief number one. And then I'm going to highlight it and change the font size to about 130. Let's try that. Okay. Um, still not uh, as big as I want, so I keep increasing it until it is. So we'll say I want it roughly about this big. Um, and it still doesn't take up the entire length. So there's, um, the easiest way to do this is to select the free transform tool, okay, and not holding down shift, so just using the tool itself, is to pull it across so it's the width that you want it. Okay, that does manipulate the text so it's not as skinny as it was, um, but that's okay for the purpose that we want it. Okay, so now we have um, the masthead in. I don't like the color of the masthead so all you need to do is click back on that text tool, highlight it, go to color, double click on the text box there and change that color. So I'm going to change that to uh, white for just a moment. Okay and I'm going to go back to my layers panel and put the masthead behind the main cover image so she's in front there, okay? And then I've added the masthead. So you use that same text technique to add your cover lines. So you'd create a new layer, call it your cover lines, and then use the text tool again to add in all your color line, cover lines, sorry. Okay, so. Make sure I have in here, so just make sure your cover lines are above your um, image. All right, and you can format where that is 
up the top here so you can center align it, um, right align it, left align it, all that sort of stuff. Okay? Um, and just move it around normally. All right? The next thing that you need to know how to do is add um, shapes. So some of you will need to add some shapes for your strip or a circle for your puff. Okay, so for a strip, all you need to do is create another rectangle. Um, so I'm going to rename this layer shapes. Choose a color that you want. So I'll choose, say, pink. Okay, use the rectangle tool. And I'd use that as my strip and I'd put that at the bottom of my magazine. It's probably a bit too big, but that's okay. I'll zoom in and make it a bit smaller. Okay, and then all you need to do is create a text box above that to add into your strip. If I wanted to create a circle for my puff, I click and hold down on the rectangle tool and choose on to the ellipse tool. Hold down shift to make sure it's a perfect circle. Okay. I'll just do that again. Okay. And then again, I'd create a new layer with uh, text on it um, and put that on the top there. So that would be my puff. All right. And the last thing that you need to do is add your barcode in. Now, what we're going to do is go to Google and save an image of the barcode. Um, just as a JPEG and then all you need to do is drag that JPEG into this file like we did with that main cover image okay and then drag it and resize it using the free transform, uh, free transform tool on the left and then once you're done all you need to do is go file export and make sure you save it as an Adobe PDF or a JPEG file either or for our purposes, rename it as your name and magazine cover and then save it to somewhere where you can then hand it in to me for submission. You'll get another dialog box come up when you say um, save. So make sure you click on high quality print and then click on export. And then that's it.